This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Right, let's have a look at um, chapter four of the lecture notes for paper P1, uh, which uh, you can see is called Environmental Management Accounting. Now, this is actually going to be a pretty short lecture because uh, it's not really a, a question of direct calculations. Um, it's written and uh, it's all sort of written out quite well. And for me just to stand here and say, um, let's read introduction together and so on, I think it'd be a complete waste of time. Uh, I just want to highlight a few things. Otherwise, uh, it's up to you to spend time reading it. Obviously, if there is anything that doesn't make sense, ask in the Ask the Tutor forums. Uh, we'll try and clear it up for you. But um, do read it, read it properly. Uh, so I think it's, there's not a lot to read, I think it's quite well written. Uh, but what it's getting at, you see, is there's been more and more emphasis uh, worldwide on um, protecting the environment and not damaging the environment. Um, if you're old like me, then it used to be something people didn't think about much. You know, there was people, you had companies polluting uh, rivers with the sewage, uh, you had lots of uh, waste, uh, plastic floating around in the sea and so on. But more and more, um, there have been laws brought in to try and avoid that sort of thing. More and more companies want to avoid waste themselves because it's wasting money. And there's more and more uh, pressure from consumers. Um, people tend not to like companies that are um, environmentally unfriendly, that cause pollution things. Um, in a sense, it's a good selling point if a company is environmentally friendly. So it's something that has become uh, much, much more important. Uh, in recent years, and something co companies do need to focus on. Uh, that's the introduction. Um, if I just run through, as I say, without reading every line, the second section says the, the impact of it on financial performance. And you can see there, um, if we're wasteful, if uh, a restaurant wastes food, then all right, it's an environmental cost. It's a direct cost on them. Uh, of the cost of that waste uh, and things like polluting a river I mentioned earlier, the cost of them to clean this up. Revenue may suffer through reputational damage. I said again a minute ago that more and more people, uh, consumers, are looking to see how environmentally friendly the company is. If they look to be helping the environment, look at Apple making a big thing about how they recycle them. Um, old iPhones and claim back the metals in them rather than throw them away. It makes them look good. Uh, it enhances the reputation, can help the revenue. Uh, and the reverse, uh, if the brand value goes down because of it, um, it can hurt the financial stability. And uh, obvious, the last one, uh, fines and penalties. Uh, I've kept mentioning pollution in, in the river. Uh, not only is it bad for the uh, reputation of the company, but there are likely to be fines involved, the costs of cleaning up, the penalties and so on. Um, the, uh, over the page, the third section talks about the uh, sort of costs there are. Uh, it's not always easy, but uh, identifying them. Uh, because it's not just the obvious costs of cleaning up pollution or paying a fine, but something that's slightly less obvious, delivery and transport. Nothing to do directly with what we're producing. But if we're uh, delivering to customers, um, then again, there's the energy being used, the fuel, and the pollution effects of our delivery vans. We need to be looking at those sorts of costs. Uh, design costs, when we're designing a new product, the company wants to design it to be environmental friendly, to cut waste and so on. Well, 
can put up the cost of designing the products in the first place. Uh, staff training, again, that's certainly not an obvious cost, but you like to need to train the staff on how to um, uh, watch for environmental costs, research and development, measuring, controlling, reporting. I say nothing exciting there, but costs that are perhaps a bit less obvious. Uh, the categorisation of environmental costs, and I will actually write this on the screen, because at the moment you've been staring at a blank screen. Uh, but I will write it down simply because you'll see in a later chapter the same categorisation comes in uh, for other reasons, for other types of costs, um, very much to do with quality. But in terms of the environment, you'll see there are four categories of costs. There's prevention costs. I wish I hadn't written because my writing's bad, but still, you've got it typed in front of you. Uh, prevention costs, costs of actually trying to avoid uh, the adverse effects, trying to avoid wastage, trying to avoid pollution. So the costs involved there are preventing the problem. Uh, there's appraisal costs. Appraisal measuring. Uh, the expenditure to be able to measure how well we're controlling things, how well we're stopping uh, uh, there being environmental problems. So on the one hand we want to stop them, but at the same time we'll need to measure to check we are stopping them or how well we're stopping um, or cutting these costs. Um, there's then failure costs, but two types of failure. If we do cause problems, if we do cause pollution and whatever, well, we say it's an internal cost. And when it's a direct cost for the company, when it doesn't directly affect uh, the consumer, the outside. Um, and so internal costs, uh, it says there, managing and limiting the impact of hazardous waste. The cost directly on us, that would include things like uh, fines, but also external ones, which directly affect the outside world, where we're not managing to prevent, uh, and it is causing an effect external. Now, uh, as I say, well, I'll say a bit more about those four categories in a later chapter when we talk about quality, where it's more common. Uh, before I turn to the uh, final page on it, um, there's that exercise. And here, well, I'll start you off, but you have a go yourself. There's a printed answer at the back, and it's silly me just writing out uh, the answer. It says, suggest some key performance indicators that could be used to measure the environmental performance of a large supermarket chain. You know, imagine the company you work for is a large chain of supermarkets. They want to reduce the environmental costs, um, but they need to set up a, a procedure for measuring how well they're achieving it. And what we call performance indicators. How might, what sort of things might we look at? It's only suggest, there's no sort of definitive answer, but what sort of things might you look at? to see how well we are achieving what we're after to cut down our environmental costs. And as I say, I'll, I'll give you two, just to make sure you're clear about the idea. But then do have a think yourself. Think very carefully, very hard. See if you can think of three or four yourself before you look at um, the answer at the back. But I think uh, one that had come to me straight away, if you're a supermarket, selling food, whatever else it may sell, is the amount of waste. You know, inevitably a supermarket is likely to have waste. The, the food has a limited uh, shelf life. If they haven't sold it, uh, then inevitably there's going to be some food that one way or another has to be removed. And so that's something that's being useful to measure. Obviously they want to keep that to an absolute minimum. But uh, you need a way of measuring it, where you can actually check, are we improving, are we less waste or not? And so it would be um, 
an obvious one would be uh, how many kilos of waste. Per week. It's something you can measure and we can compare. Hopefully uh, the waste is reducing, maybe it's going up, in which case we've got a big problem. So remember, there's no sort of right answer here. Maybe in the exam you'll um, be asked to choose, given a list and said which of these are relevant. Uh, but the, the important thing is to be clear the sort of thing you're looking at. I said I'd suggest too. Another one, send the UK, uh, has been uh, a major thing in the not too recent past. Um, a supermarket used to provide lots of lots of plastic bags, free of charge. Uh, and of course, there's all this problem about disposing of uh, all these plastic bags, and so. Uh, not only have you got them charging for bags, but they're uh, recycling them. They're, they're encouraging you to bring back the bags to be used again, that sort of thing. And so uh, a measure could be um, the number of plastic bags recycled. Uh, so again, it's only a suggestion. There's no perfect way. And every business, you know, has to look at uh, the factors unique to the business. But do spend a few minutes, pause this lecture, or wait until I've said the last bit. But then do have a think. See if you can come up with another two, three, four things that might be worth looking at. You've all been to a supermarket, so you all know uh, basically what's involved. And then have a look at the uh, answer at the back and see if. Um, See if you're on the right lines. Anyway, the last bit I'll actually speak about, the last page. It says, oh, not the last page, yes, that's what it is. Uh, different methods of accounting for environmental costs. Uh, this isn't specifically a, a, a calculation exercise. <coughs> Be aware of the various techniques. Uh, you've got four there. Uh, Input-output analysis, uh, I've already said I won't read in detail, but it's, it's trying to measure what goes in and what comes out and what's happened to it. Um, you know, in an ideal world, if you put material, if you put a thousand tonnes of material into a process, you'd expect to get a thousand tonnes of product out at the other end. Well, it's measuring how much goes in, how much comes out, because any difference is the waste. You know, if you put a thousand tons in and you're wasting 10% for whatever reason, only 900 tons come out at the other end. Uh, we want to keep that waste to a minimum. So it's looking at all the resources. What goes in, what goes out, what's happened to the bit that's gone missing. Uh, flow cost accounting uh, is very much the same thing, except uh, 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 that instead of looking at the whole business, it, it's breaking it down, as you seem to looking purely at materials, um, the system, the resources used in the systems, and the resources in delivering uh, and disposal. Uh, life cycle costing, uh, what that is, is instead of the costing we were looking at, the basic costing we were looking at in the earlier chapters, of just costing out per unit and looking at the production costs, Life cycle costing is trying to bring in all the costs over the entire life of a product. So not just the production costs each year that we're making it, but all the costs involved at the beginning in terms of um, the design and the research, and costs involved at the end, um, such as any costs of closing down our um, plant, our machines, or disposing of machines and clearing up waste and so on. We're trying to bring in all the costs involved, uh, not just the conventional day-by-day um, -day production costs. And finally, perhaps the most obvious, uh, activity-based costing. We looked at the idea of activity-based costing again in um, I think it was chapter two. 
Um, we said we were looking at the various activities where costs are being incurred. And you know, in ordinary activity based costing, we're looking at things like all oh, the cost of setting up machines, the, the cost of receiving material, and so on. But uh, when we look at environmental costs, we can look at the environmental costs involved, treat them as activities. And try and identify you know, what's causing uh, the waste costs and so on, the electricity costs. You know, there's another example we see of environmental. Obviously, we want to cut electricity because it saves us money, but also um, it's bad for the environment. You know, everybody is being encouraged to use less power. Then there's less global warming, etc. Anyway, I keep saying primarily a, a chat chapter. So I think I've said enough. But do, do please go back and read it yourself properly. Okay. <laughs>